So frankly, we got some sad news this week from the WWE as we found out what's going on with Daniel Bryan and what's next for Daniel Bryan. And unfortunately, it's not going to revolve around the WWE ring, it sounds like, ever again. As Daniel Bryan announced his retirement from professional wrestling effective immediately due to some long-term concerns about the health of his brain due to repeated concussions and head trauma that he suffered throughout his decade and a half plus long wrestling career. And for those of you that have been wondering why I didn't do a video about this yet, um, it was not because of uh, distaste for Daniel Bryan. It was not because of a personal bias against Daniel Bryan. It's not because I didn't want to. It's actually the opposite. I wanted to take some time to actually think about what I was going to say. I wanted to take some time to make sure I fully and truly represented my thoughts accurately. Um, I wanted to make sure that I took some time, and when I did it, I would feel confident that I did it right. And that was important to me in this particular case. So, sorry some of you that have been waiting for me to talk about this had to wait so long for me to talk about this. But ultimately, here it is. And I'm here to talk about what Daniel Bryan's legacy will be. And, you know, in a lot of ways, what Daniel Bryan represents to me and what his legacy will be to me. And when the announcement came on Twitter first on Monday that Daniel Bryan was going to retire effective immediately and then he was going to, you know, talk more about it on Raw, there was a small part of me, and I know I'm not the only one, and especially the way it was set up throughout the course of the night, was wondering what if, what if this was a Mark Henry type of deal all over again, what if this was some big setup, what if this was just one big work, not saying that the injuries were ever a work, but the fact that he's been ready, ready for a while, and they were just ready for the right moment and opportunity to bring him back. You know, I can't lie, I had that thought, and thought that might have been a possibility. Well, we've, it seems like we found out that that was totally wrong. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that's what I was thinking at the time. Um, so when the announcement came, and, you know, it was, it was a moving part of television, you know, to see a guy that you could talk about the narrative being the ultimate underdog who overcame so much, paid his dues, um, overcame all of the obstacles and odds, all the people that doubted him, all the people that said no, all the people that said you'll never be a top guy, you'll never main event a WrestleMania, people like me, you know. The fact is, the guy did do all of that. You know, it's one of those truly remarkable life stories to see somebody who had a dream, who busted his ass over the years, treated the business with respect, treated himself with respect, treated the fans with respect, treated his peers with respect. You don't hear a lot of people say a lot of bad things about Daniel Bryan. You know, and in the business of professional wrestling, it's very cutthroat, that is very sneaky, slimy, behind your back politics. You just don't hear many people say bad things about somebody like Daniel Bryan, similar to how you don't hear people say a lot of bad things about The Undertaker. You don't hear people say a lot of bad things about Mick Foley. You know, to me, he's one of those guys that I, when I look at him, I think about respect and the tremendous amount of respect that I have for him. The tremendous amount of respect that I have for a guy to be willing to pay his dues and bust his ass and work hard for so many years, treat everybody well along the way, be willing to change, be willing to be flexible, be willing to admit what he did know, and most importantly, I think, what he didn't know, to see the growth and development of the performer to become the worthy main event competitor that he ultimately did. I mean, now, with that said, though, I can't lie to you and say that in some ways I'm not happy that he retired, or in some ways that I'm not satisfied with this announcement or pleased about this announcement. You know, you're not always going to agree with me in the things I say, but I, at least, if anything else, want you to feel like you have the credibility for me that you're going to know the real deal. You're going to know the real shit when it comes to me and what I think about a particular topic. I don't want you to be wondering or vacillating, oh, is this guy really serious or not? Does he really mean that? Does he not? When it comes to Daniel Bryan, I'm happy that he retired in certain ways because, A, you know, I'm glad to see that he valued his long-term health and safety uh, over continuing to be an in-ring performer. It takes a tremendous amount of courage to be a guy like him 
that throughout his adult life, you know, Daniel Bryan and I are about the same age. The only thing he's known is professional wrestling. And I can only imagine how gut-wrenching, I, I can't even understand it, I can only imagine, that's the key word, imagine, how devastating that must be to have something that he's geared and shifted his whole life towards to chase a certain dream, to actually have the courage to chase a dream, to be one of those lucky people in this world that can actually have the ability to go chase their dream. And then just as he's about to reach that pinnacle, and he does in some ways reach that pinnacle, it's all viciously snatched away from him. And then to be able to have the courage to ultimately do what's right and put his long-term health and safety, his family, in front of his own selfish desires, that takes guts. That's a man right there. And above all else, I respect Daniel Bryan as a man for having the courage ultimately, even if he didn't want to, even if he was somewhat forced into the decision. At some point in time, you still got to recognize the realization. You've still got to come to grips with the reality, and you still got to be willing to deal with it and accept the consequences. And he has, and he did. So I'm happy that he's prioritized his long-term health, his marriage to Bree, his kids in the future, perhaps. You know, he valued his family more than he did his wrestling career. And there's a lot of wrestlers over the years who could sit there and say that they valued everybody and everyone except their family. And they ultimately put the wrestling business number one, number two, number three, number four. You name it. Ric Flair would be a perfect example of that. We all know this to be true, and Ric Flair even admits to that. But Danny Bryan did do that. So I'm happy, and I hope he can find some peace in this. I will say from a wrestling fan standpoint, somebody who's done these videos over the past few years, there is a small selfish part of me is gl that is glad that Daniel Bryan's not going to be around anymore. Um, because Daniel Bryan was one of those unanimously over for the most part individuals. And sometimes you forget how annoying that could be from a fan base standpoint at some points in time because, you know, for years all you would hear about is Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan. To the point where, for me, it started to become annoying. To the point, to me, where I started to resent the guy a little bit because I got tired of everybody telling me how awesome he was instead of me being allowed to kind of come to my own determination and my own evaluation and my own opinion. There's a part of me that's happy that he's gone because I won't have to fucking hear about him anymore. I won't have to hear about people still fucking wanting him to come back and then still wanting to throw him right into the main event spot at WrestleMania. You know, I'm glad he's gone in the sense that, to me, with WrestleMania 30, one of the real dangers of it was that instead of the WWE sticking to their guns, they listened to the audience, but they listened to the audience in a way that made the audience feel like they had that power. And I felt, frankly, that the WWE audience, especially the hardcore audience, had become a little drunk with that power. And then the ridiculousness of what happened in the 2015 Royal Rumble and the aftermath, and then even over the past several months. And there's a part of me, I'm not going to lie, that's going to be glad to not have to talk about Daniel Bryan all the time, that's not going to have to watch Daniel Bryan anymore, and not have to listen to Daniel Bryan's fans. That's just the way it is. Sorry. Y'all have your opinions, I have mine. When y'all don't like that, you know, look at how y'all acted sometimes about it. I mean, that's just the truth of the matter. Um, so, you know, and I also look at it, too, from a standpoint, I'm somewhat happy because, you know, he was another one of those indie darlings. Yeah, that's part of it, too. I mean, he was another one of those guys that was going to appeal to a certain loud segment of the audience, and they were going to love him, and they'd be very happy with him at the top. But was he truly going to be a mainstream guy that appealed to the masses, that brought new eyeballs to the product? And I don't know that Daniel Bryan ever did. I don't know that Daniel Bryan was ever a big money draw. I don't know if he was really that hugely over. The Yes Chant was over. I think it was an element, a part of him that was over as a top guy. But again, at the end of the day, did he bring new eyeballs to the product? Did he grow the WWE brand? No, I don't necessarily know that he did. It's not necessarily to blame him that he didn't, but I don't think that he did. And, you know, for as vociferous as the support was for Daniel Bryan, it got to the point where it frankly got a little bit ridiculous to where I started to think that people that had resented John Cena for so many years because of the uh, Super Cena booking that he got it, had gotten were now getting to the point where they wanted Daniel Bryan to win absolutely everything. And while some of his fans may deny that, you can't really fully deny it. Look at the reaction to the 2015 Royal Rumble. 
the guy had just main evented WrestleMania 30. He was coming off of an injury. You wanted him to go right back into the main event of WrestleMania 31, and then what? You wanted him to have a long title reign this time, and then WrestleMania 32. It, it was going to be a never-ending cycle. That's just the way I see it. But, you know, in, in a lot of ways, it's sad. And I'll think about Daniel Bryan's legacy in this sense, in terms of what could have been and what should have been, and a lot of unrealized potential. And it was a bit of a tragedy in a way. And here's what I mean. You know, for me, like I said, I was never huge on the guy. I just never really got it. I was one of those you would definitely throw into the doubters category, and he proved me wrong. There's no question about that. And I'm glad he did. I wish more of these guys in the professional wrestling business did prove me wrong. I wish the business did prove me wrong more because the product would be a better place for it. But he was one of those guys that did that. And, you know, he, he was one of these guys that, to me, I frankly think was more of a respectable figure than a CM Punk. Frankly, I always felt he was a, as he developed as a WWE performer, you know, I thought he became better than CM Punk. That's just my opinion. That's my opinion. Um, what I always admired about Daniel Bryan in terms of his WWE run, he knew what he was up against. He knew he had the deck stacked against him. He knew he had to lot, had prove a lot of people wrong. Instead of bitching and moaning and complaining about it, like somebody like a CM Punk would be known to do, a Daniel Bryan just went out there and got the work. When the WWE gave him something, even if he sucked, he ran with it. You know, if the WWE put him in a situation, he maximized his television time. He made it count. And I love when guys make it count. And to me, Daniel Bryan always seemed to make his television time count, even if he wasn't put in the best possible situation. And, and I applaud him for that because that's a tough thing to do. You know, and he did that. And I always point back to, to me, at a certain point in time, I thought he was going to be an Owen Hart type of performer, which to me was a great compliment. And I think a lot of people take that as a great compliment, too. And when he teamed up with Kane and they formed Hell No, and he ran with that and he went with that, whereas a lot of people would have resented that and they would have hated it and they would have made it suck, he embraced it. He latched onto it. He owned it. He took it. He ran with it. And he made something out of it. And at that point in time, once you got through that whole thing with Team Hell No, I'm like, you know what? This guy is a well-rounded performer. This guy gets it. At some point in time, this guy could, in theory, main event of WrestleMania because you know he's going to have a large segment of the audience behind him anyways, especially the loud segment, the one that thinks they matter the most. You know, but now he's shown the versatility of his range as a performer. He grew so much as a performer in four to five years. You know, we could talk about the indie scene and all the crap he had done. as the American Dragon, Brian Daniels, and you know, all the other crap. But when he got to the WWE... I mean, he became a real performer. He became a versatile guy that could do a lot of different things in a lot of different ways in terms of a character presentation standpoint. Here was a guy that, you know, he, he just, he would seem to sink his teeth into everything he was given. Like sometimes when you watch guys, you can see that they're not as into it as they would be in other situations. He always seemed to embrace and, and grab hold of and sink his teeth into everything that was put in front of him. And I have a tremendous amount of admiration and respect for him. I really, truly do. And I think it's a tragedy, too, when you think about Daniel Bryan, because after all these years of paying the dues and overcoming the odds, you know, WWE fans had already lost CM Punk in the early part of 2014. He's not coming back anytime soon. We know that for sure. You know, so there's, there was a lot of sadness there for fans and a lot of frustration there. And now Daniel Bryan is on the cusp of becoming the top guy. He's become on the cusp of becoming that new everyman. And he gets to that moment. You think about this. WrestleMania 30 was built on the back of Daniel Bryan and his journey to become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. That entire show was built around that concept. So from in 2014, everything being about Daniel Bryan, let's be honest, even like Taker Lesnar for the streak at WrestleMania 30 took a back seat until the actual show itself. It was about Daniel Bryan and his path to go through Triple H, go through Orton and Batista, to become the Breakfast Club killer in one freaking night, to overcome all the odds, do no selling that even would make Cena damn proud, and become that new top guy for the WWE. And it's so vicious how life works out. 
And it sucks, frankly, from a karma standpoint. Because Daniel Bryan didn't deserve this. This shouldn't have happened to him. And here's what I mean. He didn't bury a bunch of people along the way. He didn't sit there and try to make other people look stupid. He didn't try to sit there and sabotage people's careers like, let's say, a John Cena does. If a John Cena all of a sudden tomorrow had to sit there and retire because of a similar type of situation, a lot of people are going to be happy. It's sad to admit, but it's true. And no, and you know what? It's not sad to admit. It's true, and I'd be happy he did. I'd be like, karma's come to collect on your bitch ass. But to me here, I don't see where karma needed to collect on Daniel Bryan. You know, just because I'm not a huge fan of his doesn't mean that I can't represent the sadness and the tragedy of what became. Because in two years' time, we went from a guy that you're thinking is never going to get that shot at the top, that the WWE is never fully going to get behind, to the guy that became who they built WrestleMania 30 around, where two years earlier at WrestleMania 28, he walks in as the World Heavyweight Champion, and they have Sheamus beat him in fucking 18 seconds. And they were trying to do it even quicker if they didn't botch it. So he went from in two years, he loses the World Championship in the Curtain Jerker match at WrestleMania 28, in 18 seconds to freaking Sheamus of all people, to the ridiculousness of being involved with AJ Lee, to now you're building... WrestleMania 30 around him and his story, his path, his journey through the Breakfast Club to the damn title, to now, two years later, his career is over. Over. Now that's terrible. You know, no question, he'll be in the WWE Hall of Fame. Will they do it this year? Will they do it next year? You know, it'll be sooner rather than later. We all know that. And it'll be deserved. And I'll defend him all the way on that one. Um, but it's just sad to me. That's the, that's the ultimate legacy here for Daniel Bryan. Is, is, is it's a tragedy. Because for so many years, to put so much work in, and then finally, you finally got to the top. It can't get any higher in today's professional wrestling business than be the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Main eventing WrestleMania. Daniel Bryan did that. He main evented WrestleMania. He had a WrestleMania show built on the back of him. Of all people, Daniel freaking Bryan. This guy became the champion. And then all those years of wear and tear, all those years of beating up his body and putting his body through hell, came back and ultimately collected. And he couldn't defeat Father Time in this particular case. He couldn't, he couldn't overcome this obstacle. I hope part of his legacy is that, in a way, that people know in the wrestling business and looking to get into the wrestling business, that if you work your ass off and you go out there every night to try and make the most of whatever you're given, if you know what you know, but more importantly, understand and know what you don't know and work to improve upon that, and you stay committed and dedicated and focused, the sky is ultimately the limit. If Daniel Bryan didn't prove that to you, I don't know what would. So I think in some ways, we can talk about the world titles, we can talk about the main event of WrestleMania. I think it's more so just as an individual, as a human being, what Daniel Bryan could represents can carry over to life, and I think it's a very, very good thing. And it's a positive legacy to leave behind. And, you know, and especially in today's business, where frankly a lot of it's not good, and we don't see a lot of guys become superstars, Daniel Bryan, for lack of a better phrase, became a superstar. He was one of the few. He was one of the few that connected with the audience to enough of a level where even the WWE couldn't fight it and couldn't go against the grain anymore, and they had to cave in. Vince McMahon had to cave into fans. That's just not something very many people could do. You've been trying to get him to cave in when it comes to John Cena for over a decade, either having him lose clean more often or doing a heel turn, and he's never caved. He's never submitted. Daniel Bryan... And his fans made Vince McMahon cave. They made him tap out. That's a hell of a legacy. But I hope the legacy is, too, is that understanding there's a price to pay for the style of work that Daniel Bryan put forth all of these years. And I hope that this can lead to a reevaluation of the style of matches that people put on both on the independent scene and, sadly, at the WWE level as well. 
Far too often, there are too many unnecessary bumps, too many unnecessary risks, too many unnecessary shots to the head, too many moves involving potential head trauma. There has to be some type of realization that there has to be a better way to go about professional wrestling than this. And there has to be a better way to put on an entertaining wrestling match than this. And there has been, and it's been done in the past, and it can still be done that way. A little less emphasis on the flips and kicks and the holy shits and the high spots, and a little more emphasis on the characters and the storytelling and building the drama to a seminal point where you have that great blow-off moment. You know, Daniel Bryan became that guy that could tell a story, that could build the drama and tension within the match, and get you to that point where you had that big blow-off moment. But it took him so many years, frankly, to get there, and it took so many years of beating the ever-loving hell out of his body for really no money at all, to now where he should be able to enjoy a nice long career at the top and people should be happy and Daniel Bryan should be happy and he's making money hand over fist, it's never going to happen. So I hope this causes a reevaluation for some, seeing somebody that's so universally at least respected, not if, even if everybody's not a huge fan of this. And like I say, I'm not a huge fan of him, but I like the dude. I like Bryan Danielson. I like Daniel Bryan. I like a lot of what he represents. And I like, most importantly, how he conducted and carried himself. And I hope this is a startling realization for a lot of people in the business, looking to get into the business, the fan base as well, that that style of wrestling has a price. There's a cost associated. And ultimately, at some point in time, that karma, unfortunately, is going to collect. And it collected on Daniel Bryan. And that's a shame. Because we should be enjoying him for the next several years to come. And now, it looks like he'll never wrestle again. So I hope... We focus on the positives of what his career, his path, his journey represented. You know, for those of you that loved WrestleMania 30 and loved that Daniel Bryan moment, don't ever let anybody take that away from you. That's your moment to have forever. And that is a moment. And believe you me, it is a moment in time that can never be taken away. And let's think about him with all the positive ways. But let's hopefully maybe learn something from it too. And, you know, when you go to an independent wrestling show and you see guys in the opening match hitting each other with steel chairs in the head, we see each people throwing each other into flaming tables of barbed wire dog shit, you know, maybe instead of cheering for it and calling for more, maybe we boo it. And maybe we say, no, this is not the type of crap that we want to see. This is not what professional wrestling should be. You know, we understand it's a physical way to make a living. You know, there are going to be bumps and there are going to be bruises. But at some point in time, we've got to be more sensible about it, too, and worry about these performers who do risk a lot to try and entertain us and their long-term health and viability and their ability to be there for their loved ones, their friends, their family. You know, to me, that's important. I hope it's important to you guys, too. So, you know, I hope, I hope the industry, the business learns from this and something positive comes out of this. You know, we start taking concussions more seriously. We start taking um, brain health more seriously. We start treating the performers better in terms of trying to make sure that, in part, we prevent those injuries. We reevaluate as a whole, you know, the style of wrestling that seems to be working the most today and seeing if there's something fundamentally wrong with it. And if we need to re-educate the business and re-educate the fan base about what good professional wrestling should be. You know, so Daniel Bryan's ultimate legacy, it's a combination of some really good highlights and some really good moments and a really satisfying path, journey, destination story, and a lot of disappointment. And it's unfortunate because maybe it could have been prevented. Maybe it couldn't have. Maybe that was the only way Daniel Bryan was ever going to get to that spot. But I hope, if anything else, that there can be some real positive change that comes out of this and that focus on brain health. Now, you know, when you've heard people talk about it with the NFL, it's like, eh, it's the NFL. You know, if you don't really like NFL, you don't care. Now, if you're a professional wrestling fan, especially a hardcore wrestling fan, you probably care a tremendous deal, more likely than not, about Daniel Bryan. This has hit you in the loincloth. This has hit you where it hurts, right in the old heartstrings. I mean, now you feel it. You understand the reality of it. And I hope that at the end of the day, we can look back at his career fondly. Yeah, there will always be that feeling of, yeah, but... You know, there will always be that feeling of, man, what what if? You know, or what should have been? But there's still a lot of good to hang on to. But I hope we also learn from it 
and it helps make the performers better and healthier and it helps make the business better ultimately I think that's as much a positive legacy for Daniel Bryan as anybody because if anybody was going to help change the business in that respect it's got to be him so my hat's off to him nothing but love and respect for Daniel Bryan he's earned it you know and he's a guy that you know I wish him nothing but the best as he goes forward with the next stage of his life